Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you right now for your grace and your mercy, Lord. And we want to welcome you to our online service at this at the Place of Healing Church. Uh, last week uh, was our last, uh, for the time being, our last time in the Valley Dale. And so I'm coming to you live from my basement. And this is the basement experience. Okay, we have a limited number of seating. So there were some people who were, uh, are, who are being allowed to come. Uh, however, what we're going to do in the future is we will always be online. Um, this is uh, Communion Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you and we praise you for being here. Uh, because we're um, new to this and some people are new to this, we're going to um, hold our communion. Normally I like to do it at the beginning, so go ahead and pass them out. We're going to hold our communion until the end of service. Okay, but we're going to pray right now. Amen. Amen. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. Heavenly Father, we lift you up and we magnify your precious holy name. Lord, we ask, Heavenly Father, you said where two or three are gathered in my name, you are in the midst thereof. So we welcome you here today, Lord God. Your Holy Spirit, we thank you for your very presence in this place, Lord God. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would wash over everyone in this room, Lord God, with your love, with your power, Lord God. Move by your spirit in this place, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, and we lift you up, and we magnify your most magnified your most holy name jesus thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. <clears throat> oh boy hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. So if you know this song, join in with me. We don't have instrumentals, so we're going to do our fellow. Can we do that? You got Amen. This. Hallelujah. You are a mighty God. You, you are, are a mighty, mighty God. God. Mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. Mighty Mighty, mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. Same thing, mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. You are a holy God. You are a holy God, holy God, holy God, yes, you are a holy God. Y'all sing with us, you are a holy God. You, you are, are a holy, holy God. God. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. Holy God. Holy, holy God, God, holy God, yes, you are a holy God. Holy Holy, holy God, holy God, yes, you are a holy God. Holy, holy, holy God, holy God, yes, you are a holy God. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, yes, you are an awesome God. Awesome, 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 mighty, mighty, 
mighty, holy, 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 mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. He's awesome and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Okay. This is a song that's near and dear to my heart. It's like give myself away. You know, when you're serving God, you know it takes a lot. Hallelujah. 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 I give myself away. I, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am, here I stand. Lord, my heart is in your hands. Lord, I long to see your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. Oh God. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice of all my dreams, all my plans. Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. Oh God, I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Oh God. I give myself away. So you can use me. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. She's waiting on me to sing a song now, y'all. I don't know the one or two, and I don't really know them. I'd be messing up the words, but I'm going to do what God gave me in my heart just now. 
Because see, this experience is different. It's, it's not usual for people to, to come into, you know, a lot of churches start out in their home, but they don't always start out in their basement. Most people I know that started out in their home, started out in their living room. And, and we have already started. And so, man, I'm going to explain this whole thing more further uh, as we go into detail. But what I want to do right now is sing a song that's very familiar. Because this whole thing, the only thing that we have that we can give God is our praise. We don't have anything else that he needs or wants because he's, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So when we praise God, we're giving him exactly what he wants every day of our life. We praise him in the way we walk. We praise him in the way we sing. We praise him in the way we think. Our praise is what God is desired, desires of most from us. So I'm gonna sing this song and please Lord be with me. <clears throat> praise is what I do. When I want to be close to you, I lift my hands in praise. <clears throat> praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I bless him at all times. And I rise to praise you through the good and the bad. I praise you whether happy or sad because praise is what I do. And I Sing with me. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times and I, I vow to praise you through the good and the bad I praise you whether happy or sad I praise you in all that I go through because I do because I owe it all to you. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I bless him at all times. And I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I praise you whether happy or sad. I praise In all that I go through, because praise is what I do. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Put your hands together Thank you, Jesus. for Jesus. See, you're not clapping for me or the song. You're Thank clapping Jesus. because of who Jesus is, and, and that that is. That, that's all we need to know about why we clap our hands together, why we lift our voices in song, why we, I, I don't know what you came in here to do this morning.
But I know for a fact that I came to lift up the name yes, of the Lord. Yes. I came in here today to give God glory in all that I go through. I came in here to give God glory because he died for yes. me. I, I don't Absolutely. know if you feel like he died for you, but I know he died for me. I, I know that everything that I've done that dishonored him, Lord God, he still forgave me yes, for all of it. Yes. And he died for me. He yes. put his life on the line so that I might live. He rose again so that I might be able to shout hallelujah. He rose again. Yes. So that I might be able to be able to give him the glory. He yes. rose again just because he wanted to be my friend. He called me a friend. Yes. I don't yes. know of anybody, of any friend I got that would really lay down their life for me. I mean, I know some that say they would, say they got my back, say they my BFF and all of these things. But I only know one who died for me and his name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. And, and I don't know about you, but when I think of the name of, the, of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, yes. thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. And so right now at this very moment, I, I need him more than I've ever needed him in my life. I mean, you, you might not know, you don't know the thoughts that go through my mind. You don't know the things that come into my heart. You don't know the things that I struggle with, but I need God right now more than I've ever needed him in my life. So the song says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is an awesome time to be in the house of the Lord because, hey, you know, because things don't always turn out quite like you view them in your mind. Amen. Sometimes things come out and, and, and operate a little differently. You know, you, you have, you know, many, many pastors would like for the vision that God gives him or her when they start a church that when they walk in there, that the community just flocks in and just it just overflows. They don't have enough seats 
They don't have enough room. They don't have enough parking. They don't have enough of anything. But oftentimes, that's just not how it works. Oftentimes, I mean, there are, there are great ministries. Uh, uh, when I think of some of the great ministries that I know of, I've, I've heard some of the people that I follow uh, that preach. Uh, T.D. Jakes moved from West Virginia and went all the way to Dallas, Texas, and he took eight families with him. And look at his ministry now, all those, these many years later. I remember uh, hearing Noel Jones talk about the, first, the only thing he's ever done since he was 19 years old is become a pastor. And the first church he pastored was in Longview, Texas, and they had about 25 members. And so you look at their churches now, and, and T.D. Jakes have over 30, and Noel Jones has over 30,000 members, both of them. But nobody saw them when they were, T.D. Jakes talks about going out into the woods and preaching to the birds and, and all, all, any, anything that would listen to the trees, training himself to preach. Noel Jones talks about how when he would go to the national convention of the organization, the Pentecostal Sins of the World, he was a part, that he borrowed a station wagon from one of the members that he had to put together to drive and drove it all the way up to New York from Longview, Texas, and pulled up to the Hilton in this raggedy beat up station wagon with his family. See, now he drives a rodeo and he's got a Porsche. He lives in Beverly Hills. And, <clears throat> and no, I don't know what T.D. Jakes drives, but I know he got a huge house in North Dallas and with a pool and all these amenities. But see, you see them now, but you don't see them when they were in that one room. You don't see them when they had when they were, they were struggling to make ends meet, when every dime that they had went to the supporting of the ministry. You don't see them now. You see them when they broke, when, they, when God has blessed them in a way. And, and God has different plans for everybody's ministry. Some people are, you see, you look at Benny Hill, he doesn't really have a church, or Benny Hinn, rather. I said Benny Hill. <laughs> he doesn't even have a church. He actually uh, just ministers to people as he goes out on the road. He don't really have a, an established church building where he holds church. And with that said, church is not in the location. Church is not in the building. Church is actually in your heart. Doesn't matter where you sit at, where you worship God. We have placed a lot of emphasis on the location. And we don't need to place emphasis on the location. We have placed a lot of emphasis on the person preaching the word. And we don't need to place a lot of emphasis on the person preaching the word. We need to place the emphasis on the word of God itself. Amen? Yes, yes. And so here at Place of Building Church, now you can clap if you want to and go ahead and give I'm God some pride. You're giving it to him, <laughs> I'm excited too. Y'all don't know what we went through, man. A friend of mine is here. My Actually, <laughs> my nephew is here. I'm going to call him my nephew, see, because he, he's married. He, he's going to be married to my niece, so I call him my nephew. But for those of you who are here and some of you, for what you can see, what you see behind me, he did all of this work in one yes. week. He painted this room. He, he fixed leaks in the ceilings. He he did all kinds of things. He painted the floor. He did everything we asked him to do. And and here's the thing. I paid him. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not really talking about what I paid him. What I'm talking about is what he sacrificed. Because I didn't come close to paying him what the work he did is worth. Y'all need to understand that. He was here for four days. Is that right? That about right? Tuesday through yes. Thursday, right? Yes. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. He was here all of those days. And, and he's here in the audience today. He told me he was going to come by. And I told him, I said, don't be surprised if you watch, because he watches me. But don't be surprised if you hear your name mentioned. Because sometimes, you you know, you have to you have to honor what God presents to the person. You know, you don't know what he saved us. If I, he saved me in time, because I couldn't have done what he did. I saw this man painting. He painted these baseballs. I was like, Man, he didn't get not one ounce of white paint on the rest <laughs> of none of this stuff he painted. He said, I made some mistakes. I just know how to correct them. I said, well, I can't tell. You know, and, and everything that he did, I mean, right down to the tile that he replaced in the ceiling. I wish I could show you, but there's this one place where there, there's a pipe coming out the ceiling. And, and he was precise. He cut, it, it was a one end where the pipe was. They just cut a hole out. And you saw the extension. He said, no, nah, I'm going to put that little piece right back up in there. It looks like he wrapped it right around that pipe. I'm just telling you, the things that he done was a blessing from God. See, you don't understand when God is really blessing something, he blesses it all the way. And so I want to thank him for, for what he done. You know, uh, I wish I could have done more for him, but I really thank him. I got I got some people sitting here that that uh, if you knew everything that they did, you'd be like, wow, because I know everything that everybody in this room has done. And I'm like, wow, 
I, I mean, all I can say is wow, because every day they, they you know, I, I, I got a friend in here right now. I ain't going to say his name, but I'm going to tell you that he always keeps his word to me. Yes. He has never not kept his word. And I love that about him. He has a willing spirit. And, 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 you know, sometimes we're not always where God wants us to be. But let me, let me explain something to you about where you are in your walk with Christ. See, people like to say this phrase, what is, I don't even know if I'm going to get it right because I don't particularly care for it. I may not be where God wants me to be, but I'm glad I'm not who I used to be. How you know you're not right where God needs you to be right now? See, many times we want to put ourselves down because of what we see that we're not doing. But God sees that. He knew that when he brought you into this thing. He, he Look, not one of us came out of the womb walking, talking, let alone praising God. Not one of us came out like that. And so why do we should not put the pressure on ourselves to feel like that when we walk into God's house that I got to get it right. 100% of the time, because you may not get it right. But it's in the heart that God is concerned with you getting it right. And so here at Place of Healing Church, we have a church vision. And that vision is, is where healing begins with healing your soul. And how we do it, we do it by sharing the love of Jesus, sharing our faith and belief in Jesus through evangelism. And listen, evangelism is not about telling people about you. It is about telling people about God. Okay. You want to talk about your experiences in God. Make sure you end it with knowing, with letting everybody know it wasn't me that did it. It was God that did it through me. I, I didn't pull myself out, out of the crack house. I didn't pull myself out of lustful situations. I didn't stop myself from lying. It was God that did it through me. Okay. that That's the power of the Holy Spirit working. <clears throat> and the last thing we do, uh, there are three things. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We always want to pray for you. We don't care what your situation is. We want to pray for you each and every day. I know there are people who may think that, you know, uh, there are stipulations on prayer. And there are some conditions on prayer. Don't get me wrong. Because there are some times when we can pray for a person and we can lead that person in a way worse state than what we pray for them out of them. But there's also the ability to just pray the worst out of a person. I know my mother did it for me because I was the worst of the worst. I had some stuff going on, boy, you, didn't, you don't even want to talk about. But if it had not been for my mother, yes. things would not be what they are right now. Okay? So the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know, that's, that's important, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are the called according to to his purpose, not your purpose, his purpose. And we find in this statement three things, this, this scripture, three things, a statement of fact, a statement of requirement, and a statement of purpose. And the statement of fact is we all have purpose. How, how, how do we know this? Because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, that before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I knew sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nation. So everything God determined that you were going to be before he even, before your mother and father got together, before they, that seed was planted in, see, and men are the only ones who plant seeds. Let me, let me explain something to you. We are the bloodline. But, but, but before your mother and father got together, God had already preordained who your parents would be. So don't sit up here and have a problem with the fact that, you know what? I wasn't born into the right family because it doesn't matter. God already established who you were going to be. I, I, I don't have the money. It doesn't matter. Uh, if whatever God plans for you to do, he'll give you the finances to do it. He'll give you the talent to do it because he purposed what you would be before you were ever born. And the Bible also, in this statement, this statement also says that there is a requirement. Now, see, all of this stuff that God planned for you to be before you got here, it is done and completed through your loving him. That's the only requirement. You just got to love him. And to love him is to know something about him. You have to be able to say, you know, I love God the way I love him. And the Bible says to love somebody, you have to know something about him. The Bible don't say that, but I say that. I don't know about you. I just don't want to love somebody that I don't know nothing about. I don't even want to walk in church and have a preacher start preaching and say something up there and it's all willy-nilly. And it ain't nowhere close to, to the truth. 
That's a problem. I, I, it ought to be a problem for every Christian walking, for somebody to be standing in the pulpit and talking about something that you ain't even read the verse. You can't even try to discern what it means because you don't even know what it says. And so the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, not unto your pastor, not unto your friends. You ain't got to show off what you know to nobody. You just need to know it unto God. And, and, and a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and this is this, this not a shame part. See, have you ever felt like somebody asked you a question in the Bible and, and you don't know what it is, what, know the answer? I know I felt that way. Okay. But here's the good thing I know. If they say enough of the right stuff about it, I'm like, yeah, I know where to find that. I, I will find it and I can show it to them. Just because I know my Bible in that way. Okay. And so that brings us to the promise. And the promise is all things. I don't care where you find your at, yourself at in life right now, how things are going, whether you up, down, in the middle, it doesn't matter. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go on to our sermon this morning. And it comes out of the book of Genesis. Chapter 35, verse 16, beginning at verse 16. Genesis chapter 35, beginning at verse 16. When you have it, just say amen. And we're going to stand as we read the word of God, uh, as we reverence his word. Please stand on your feet. So we, I know I don't know who asked that, but I'm going to ask that today, that we stand on our feet as we read God's word. And so the word of God says, And they journeyed from Bethel. There was but a little way to come to Ephrath, and Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. I want to talk to you this morning with the thought in mind, as a man thinketh, we're in that series, with the thought in mind, push. I want you to understand the word push. Yes. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. And we praise you and we pray that the words of my mouth represents the, the meditations of thine heart. Holy Spirit, have your way in me that it may rest in the hearts of those under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You want to say hallelujah while you take your seat? Go ahead. <laughs> you know, everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone who later looks at this online, everyone who breathes is on some kind of journey. We're all on a journey. And, 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 Israel, Jacob, is on a journey with his family in this passage of scripture. And, and we take this journey, sometimes we, we don't realize how important the journey is to where we're going. Because there are lessons learned in the journey. There are things that we're taught in the journey so that when we reach the destination, we'll know what we don't want to do at, at, at the pinnacle of this destination and what we do want to continue to do because we're on a journey. All of us are on a journey and some of us are closer to the end of our journey than others. And, and the journey, amen, is about to happen in this case, they're almost at the end of their journey and they travail. And travailed means, this word travailed in this passage of scripture means to bring forth, to bring up. God is raising you and I up to be what he called us to be. And so this journey that you're on, even though you may not understand it, even if you do completely understand it, is because God is trying to make a move in your life to take you to a place 
that you've never truly been to. But it is a journey and you travail in it. It's traveling somewhere. You're going somewhere. You're moving up. You're not staying stagnant. It's not sitting in one place and not moving. Sometimes the journey may cause you to pause, but it will not cause you to stand in a place and not be moving forward. Sometimes standing still causes you to view what God is doing around you. Sometimes standing still causes you to meditate on the things of the Lord so that you can make the next step. God doesn't always want you moving forward in motion. Sometimes he's wanting you to move forward, particularly in your mind. And so when we are coming up, we need to change the way there are things that God wants to change in our mind because you see things a certain way. We came into this world not of God. And so coming into this world not of God, we have a moral standard and a moral view that associates ourselves with the world. And we cannot do discern the things of God by discern through the worldly eyes. So God has to change the way you think. And that may cause you to have to stand still. But you're still yet on a journey. Okay. You might think that I'm not prospering the way I want it to be. And I'm not talking about just prospering in money. Maybe my relationship is not growing, going the direction that I want it to go. Maybe uh, my life is not going the way I want it to go, but the journey is still yet happening and you're going, you're bringing, it's bringing you up. Sometimes the journey gets hard. The scripture here tells you that the journey was hard. Okay, she was in hard labor, is what it says. Hard labor. Now, here's the deal about labor, okay? The labor that we're in, she's in, it says, the Bible teaches us about labor. It says, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. This is what Jesus told us. There are a lot of people who are going to be some way connected to your life, to your life. All of them are not going to be willing to work in the capacity that you ask for them to work, that you need them to work. God has called a lot of people to do a lot of things, but few, many of them have not done what God has asked them to do. I know for years, I, somebody asked me not long ago, how did I start preaching? And I said, well, now, I was 12, and I'm, I'm, I'm still only 25. But, no, I'm really, I'm, 50, I'm 58. I'm going on 59, but I like to think of myself as younger. Hallelujah. Y'all can praise him for that. No. But at any rate, right, he asked me, he said, what, what brought this preaching thing on? I said, well, man, I said, the truth of the matter is, I believe I was actually called to preach when I was 12 years old. I was watching Fred Price on TV, and I told this story before, but if you, if you know the, the cartoon strip, uh, the comic strip, High and Lois. Lois is standing at the bus stop, and she got one of those old umbrellas on that come down to your shoulders. You know the ones that will come over your head and you can put, hide your face in it, and you know it's clear and everything. And she had one of those ones, but she got this really, really sour look on her face. And I'm like, wow. This look on her face is, is like a mess. All right? But as we move forward, we find out that she got this sour look because the lady next to her this, and you know, Lois was always like plain Jane, but they got this blonde bombshell standing next to her. Every time you would see her standing next to a woman, she would always be what men thought was beautiful and Lois would just be just a regular old plain Jane. But this blonde bombshell is standing there and she's smiling because it's raining, but she's smiling. And Lois got this nasty look on her face and you go to the, and they only two, you can see them all together. But when you put the two uh, frames together, the next frame shows that the rain is coming down sideways. And Lois's umbrella only comes to her shoulder. And that's why she's getting drenched and she's not happy. But the young lady next to her, it comes all the way down to her ankles. And Fred Price was talking about the covering of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. how the Holy Spirit protects, how the Holy Spirit guides into all truth. And he was having this conversation. And I remember sitting there watching it. And I said, I can see myself doing that one day. That journey started when I was 12. I didn't actually begin it until 2002, and I was born in 62. That's how long it took me to get to this place, to, to even just preaching the first sermon. Mm -hmm. And boy, let me tell you, my mother dogged me off for that one. It was horrible, but okay. 
I, I more testified. My friend looked at me and told me, that's not a sermon, that's a testimony. But anyway, that's where it started. It started in 12. But for 20 plus years, I didn't do nothing in it. 20 plus years, I didn't do nothing in it. And then things begin to change and begin to happen. Things begin to move very quickly with me and God, with God in my life because I was on a journey. There's been some missteps along the way, some hardships along the way, some things that I have gone through that I would rather have not gone through, some relationships that have not gone the way I saw them going, some situations that just changed the way I thought about everything. I'm trying to tell you that Every time the journey you're on does not have to always look beautiful. Just know that the journey you're on is being ordered by the Lord. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And it's not just a man, it's a woman. Your steps are going to be ordered by God. All you need to do is hear his voice yes. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. So the Bible says it came to pass and... She, Rachel was in hard labor. And the midwife, our midwife is God. Okay? Because God teaches us to fear not. And that's the spirit, by the way, the spirit of fear. When we begin to worry about stuff that we don't need to worry about, when we begin to have despair over things that we don't need to have despair about, whatever it is that challenges your thoughts and gives you pause in it, uh, anxiety, all of those types of things, they come from a spirit of fear. And you, because if you have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of you, have the authority to control that spirit not being in your life. It's not good enough to just pray for you to have joy instead of depression. It's not good enough to pray for you to have peace instead of anxiety because you'll just be getting rid of a symptom, but you will not be getting rid of the root. And the root is fear. So she tells, God tells her, the midwife tells her, fear not. I'm going to, you're going to have this son also. So you don't need to fear about where you're going. Okay? Because you're going to have what God plans for you to have. And all you need to do is to understand that you have to push. You and I, we have to push. Because the any woman who has ever birthed a child knows what it means to push. Yes. Amen. And she is birthed, God is birthing something in you. And when you don't feel like pushing, when the pain seems to be so hard, that's the moment that you need to push. You need to push with everything you've got. And it doesn't mean necessarily moving. It doesn't mean necessarily buying this thing. It just means pushing. As the Lord of God gives you, the Lord God gives you inspiration. We have to learn how to push. And, and sometimes pushing means losing something. And I don't know about you, but it, it was it caused me some confusion why God allowed her to bring a life into this world and die while doing it. But sometimes, most times. <laughs> All the time. When you push, you're going to lose something. Something about you is going to die. I don't know if it's lying. I don't know if it's cheating. I don't know if it's stealing. I don't know if it's drugs. I don't know if it's the job you got now because God is pushing you into a place. And when you push, sometimes there's some things that's going to die. And it's got to die in order for you to get where you want to go in order for you to get where God wants you to go. Rachel, she couldn't see that because the thought in her mind was, let's name the child Benoni, which is to say the child of my sorrow. He, she felt sorrow because she could feel the life force slipping out of her. But Abraham, but Isaac, he thought he saw it, Jacob rather, he saw it quite a bit different. And he gave him the name Benjamin, which means to bring up, which means to move forth. You need to understand that Benjamin was somebody who was going to be great. They named one of the 12 tribes after him because Rachel pushed Benjamin is because you 
push, your next move is. I don't know what that next move is, but there is a moment in your life where you got to say, as the Lord leads me. I don't know about you, but as the Lord leads me, I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to push to the next level. I'm going to move according to the Lord. I'm going to push like I've never pushed before. This place in this basement, it might look like a setback to somebody, but I need you to know that it's bringing me up because I'm pushing in the name of the Lord. I'm pushing everywhere I got to go. No spirit fear is going to cause me a problem. I'm not going to be bound down by hardiness because my pride told me Stay in the valley, Dale. But my spirit told me, the spirit of truth, which is the one truth spirit that you need to understand. Because the Lord wanted me to do a thing, and I did a thing. And now I'm pushing. I'm pushing. And I'll keep pushing. And you need to keep pushing. You need to keep striving forth. You need to keep moving. Let your setback to be a reason to push for the renewing of your mind. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So push, 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 because God doesn't want you to stay where you're at. He's got a plan for your life. And if you'll just push, you'll get where God is trying to take you. I just need you to understand that pushing is what makes the difference. We got to push when God is moving us from one place to the next. We got to push when God is trying to change something in your life. It may not be comfortable for you to push. I know there's some women who would rather say, go and just cut them out. Do the C-section, this would be a lot easier. But if you've ever had a child, every woman I know that had a C-section went through more complications after the C-section than she did than the one who pushed that baby out. Two, three days later, they were up moving around. The one with the C-section is a little bit more difficult. You don't want a C-section in your life. Because C-sections represent detouring how God wanted you to do it. And I know we don't always get it right. But if we push according to the Lord in our lives, God will make it right. Give God some praise. Oh, yeah. That's all I got for you today getting ready to have communion service and hmm, amen give me just a second I'm going to put this together for you oh boy You should have been given your communion cups when you came in. And if you're sitting in the audience and you want to partake of communion with us uh, in our online audience, if you would, if you have some, uh, I said it before last month, that if you just buy some juice at home and have some crackers, you can partake with us in communion service. So the Bible says to this, we will ask that the peace, my glass is falling, my glass is a little hot. The peace of God be with you all. If you would please stand as we prepare our hearts and minds for communion. The peace of God be with you all. And your response is also with you. And so we should never take communion and be in a place of sin. And so what I would ask that you would do is turn to someone next to you and look at them and say the following. Please forgive me, Please forgive Please forgive me. for anything that I may have done that offend thee. God forgive me of my sins. God forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Wash me. That I might be whiter than snow. Created me. Created me. A clean heart. A 
a clean heart, and a renew a right spirit in me. And a reunited spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we just want to thank you right now for your presence, Lord God, in this place, Lord God. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would take our hearts and minds, Lord God, and change them for you as we partake of this, your blood and your body, that we might be washed and cleansed holy in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And on the night of the Passover supper, Jesus said this, he says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was back betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat this my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we ask right now that you bless this your body, Lord God. That as we partake of it, as we break it and eat it, that you will be with us. Take, break, and eat y'all of it. Hallelujah. 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 This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we ask right now that you bless this your, the blood of your body. You said by your stripes we are healed, Lord God. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would cleanse our body. In Jesus' name, take and drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The rest is white as snow. My wife is talking about me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Listen, uh, I don't like to leave here. I just realized I didn't offer anybody. If anybody has anything that they need prayer for, um, if you're online and you need prayer, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I'm about to pull it up. And if you need prayer, uh, type it in right now. And, and I will check the comments. And pray for you. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to give you a few minutes to type it in. But what I want to do is I want to pray for everybody, Lord God. I want to pray that everyone receive that which they need from you. So, Spirit of the living God, we thank you and we praise you and we Bless your holy name. We ask, Heavenly Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that they step into the light of your love, Lord God, that the truth of God will magnify in them, Lord God, that they be healed in their bodies, not just physically, Lord God, but spiritually, Lord God. We rebuke unclean spirits in their lives, Lord God. We rebuke, as our lesson taught us today, the spirit of fear, and we welcome the spirit of joy. We rebuke anything that is not of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm praying for the King household right now, Lord God. Heavenly Father, they are watching down in Georgia, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you spread your love over this place, Lord God. Cleanse it, Lord God, and we rebuke any unclean spirits in their house, Lord God. We rebuke the spirit of worry. We rebuke the spirit of fear. We rebuke the spirit of bondage. We rebuke the spirit of the Antichrist. We rebuke the spirit of error in their lives, Lord God. Have your way, Heavenly Father, and we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's offering Hallelujah. time. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, First Lady, help me out. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
it's offering time. Uh, my sister asked me to. Yeah, she sent it to my text message. Oh, she sent it to this. <laughs> Hold on. She sent it to my sister. Asked, I'm going to pray for her before we go, but she asked me to pray for her. And she sent it to my sister, to my wife's text and not on, didn't put it in here. But anyway, we're good. And so the Bible says in Malachi 3, 8 through 12, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Luke 6 and 38, repeat after me. Give. Give. Yeah. Yeah. And it shall be, and it shall be given, unto you. given unto you. Good measure. Good measure. Pressed down. Pressed down. Shaken together. Shaken together. And running over. And running over. Shall men give. Shall men give into your bosom. Into your bosom. For with the same measure. For with the same measure. That ye met. That ye met. With all it shall be. With all it shall be. Measured. Measure to you, to you again. again. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my two dollars, no, I'm just kidding. That's what I give. I think it's important, you know, that you see me giving. Because if you don't see me giving, then you'll be looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm asking you for yours, but you ain't, I ain't giving none of mine. And I have this, this the King family. I want to thank them because uh, in in Georgia, because they've been a, a great blessing to this ministry. And there are others uh, that have been a great blessing to this ministry. Um, uh, the Irving family, uh, uh, Ms. Benson, uh, my friend TJ, I'm going to leave it right there. He know who he is. He's been a big, they've been big blessings to this ministry. So we thank God and we praise you. And so now we're going to go ahead and dismiss. Hmm. Hallelujah. So I'm going to bless the food and I'm going to pray over my sister first. So my wife look at me like, what are you doing? Okay. I said food, didn't I? Okay, we're going to bless the offering. See, y'all got to know. Somebody, Somebody said it's time to eat. All right. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we ask right now that you bless this offering. For those who had to give and for those who gave online, for those who did whatever it is they wanted to do in their giving, how they were able to give, we ask that you bless it right now. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I did not give this on uh, the, um, you can go, uh, I did not give this uh, information out to those of you who are online uh, that want to give. So uh, if you would like to give online, uh, the way to do that is uh, Cash App, uh, P-O-C, oh, I left the dollar sign out, my wife is checking me. I said dollar sign, P-O-C, come on, help me out, baby. P-O-C, P-O-H-C-O-H. P O H. Okay, see, I know I said it wrong. P O H C O H. It didn't, didn't sound right. I have placed it in the comment section uh, so that you can give if you like to give that way. And we thank you and we bless your offering also. So now uh, I'm going to pray for my sister and then we're going to close out. Spirit of the Living God, we ask that you that you let your blessings fall on Denise Austin, Lord God. She is currently not at home, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that you bring her home, Lord God. In full health, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for her right now. Cleanse her heart, cleanse her mind, cleanse her soul. In Jesus' name, we pray for her. Amen. Amen. And Amen. now what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch, watch pray, 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 give, live holy, live holy every, day, every day. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. you are dismissed. Amen. 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 <laughs> He said,
Oh, you want to read this? Yeah, I'll I'll go. 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 I go, man. All right, all right, all right. You got to go? You got to go back? Yeah, I got to go. I'm going to get my butt. All right. Telling me, uh, you know what? We just sitting up here talking. I ain't stopped nothing. 
I've seen it. Uh-huh. But I can't tell them how to get there. 